Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to chapter 12 of Bookmarked. Today, we are going to be talking about our bookish resolutions for the new year, kind of our reading goals and any of our plans that relate to books and reading. Um, I am Hannah. You are on my channel. I forget what the order is it's again. You. <laughs> oh, you. messed it up. Welcome to 2019. Um, I'm Haley from Haley and Bookland. And I am Zoe from Read by Zoe. So uh, we went on Twitter and we asked you guys to ask any questions. If you had any questions about any of our reading goals or plans for this new year. Um, so we will be looking at the ones that are on Twitter. But if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the chat and we will read through them and answer any of your questions. Um, but to start off, do we want to each like talk about our like at least our Goodreads reading goal for the year? Sure. Also, okay. I'll man the the chat and if okay, cool. someone else wants to do the Twitter. Should we I talk about it. should we talk about what we're currently reading? Oh, oh yes. yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> All good. <laughs> All good. Um so I finished a couple of things, so I'm trying to decide what I'm reading. So I have three books here. So I have Down Among the Sticks and Bone. Is it Bones? Plural? Yes. Bones. By Seanan McGuire. And then The Game of Hope by Sandra Gulland. And then The Cold is in Her Bones by, P wow, that's a hard name, Peter Nell Van Arsdale. So I haven't I'm heard of those past, I'm gonna read. the last two ones I've never heard of. This never one I heard. haven't seen around a lot. It came out last year. It's about Napoleon's daughter. So I'm quite intrigued about that. Um, and this one I saw on Goodreads. It's coming out in January on the 22nd. So I got an arc of it and I was like, it looks intriguing. It. I read, I started reading the prologue and I was kind of sucked into it, but then I got distracted by Sims. So then I stopped <laughs> reading it. <laughs> but um, the prologue was very interesting. So far, it's kind of reading like a fairy tale, but I've only read like two pages, so I can't really say a lot. Hannah, so what, are what are you reading? What are you reading, Hannah? Um, okay, I said I'm not reading anything. Technically, I'm still reading the books that I the, like the ones that I started in 2018 but didn't finish. Um, so I'm still reading The Afterlife of Holly Chase. Um, I didn't finish that one, so <laughs> I need to we do that. We were like on the same page. I know. Did you finish it? Yeah. Okay, no, I didn't finish it. I read oh. other things. <laughs> um, and then I also started reading Clockwork Angel, but I only read like the first 30 pages and it made me emotional. And I was like, so we got mad at me. Together. <laughs> like, waiting for me. So I'm waiting. Um, but I don't know what I want my first read of the year to be, which is kind of why I haven't read anything. It's so, so much pressure. <laughs> I feel like I don't usually care about what my first read is. Like I'll read oh, whatever. I always do. Oh, I, I never care at all. Like it doesn't matter to me at all. But like for some reason this year, I'm like, I don't know what my first year, my first read has to be. Like it has to be something I like. And so mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I say pick something that's been on your shelf for like the longest. That's what yeah, I did. Yeah. And it felt so nice to get that. And I liked it too. But to get it off my shelf. Off what my was it? It was uh, Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I really oh, want to read that. I really enjoyed it. And I'm okay. really excited. Maybe that'll read. be my first read. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. But I am currently, I've actually, I'm on my fourth book of Ooh. 2019. So they've all been wow. very short. They've all, <laughs> do you want to see? <laughs> this is all of them. They're tiny. So, I mean, it makes me feel nice because everyone's commenting like, wow, you've read like four books in four days. And, um, <laughs> but they all together, it's like one normal size book. Anyway, I'm currently reading Beneath the Sugar Sky by Sean and McGuire. So I'm trying to convince Haley to read Down Among the Sticks and Bones so that we can be together. And then I can complain to you about certain things. I'll probably so. Um, yay. <laughs> but let's talk about our Goodreads goals, I guess. Yeah. Uh, my Goodreads goal this year is 52 books. It was originally 50 because I used to go for 100 and then I was like 50 is half of 100 and I want to write more. So that was math for you all. You're welcome. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but then I saw someone said their goal was 52 books because that's one book a week. And I was like, that's a great idea. So now I'm doing 52 books because one book a week I think is reasonable. And I think even if I don't like one week, I don't read a book. I will read multiple books some weeks. Like I've already read two books this year. So I feel like it's a reasonable, easy goal to achieve. Yeah, that's, that's been Hannah my goal for like the past three years. Yeah, that's what I always do. I do 52 books. Maybe it was you that I copied. I think it 
it was. <laughs> I always do 52 books because one book a week is like so mm -hmm. um, normal for me anyway. Um, and I don't like, I don't see my Goodreads reading goal as like a challenge. Like I just like having it there as a counter, which mm -hmm. is why like I set my goal at 52, but I do kind of want to try and get to 100 again this year. Um, but it just depends on like circumstances. Uh, but I know 52 is always attainable for me because one book a week is basically what I do anyway. Um, but it's the same for me. Like there are weeks where I don't read anything and then there's one week where I'll read like seven books. So yeah. Um, I usually do 52 as well. Well, actually, usually I set it for like 100, but then as the as the year progresses and I don't read a lot, I lower it down to 52. So 52 is my goal. I will feel fulfilled if I read 52 because like a book a week, but my challenge for myself is 100 because yeah. I haven't done that before. And now that I'm not an English major, I can read whatever I think. So I have a challenge and a goal. And they're different. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same spot. Like challenge would be to get to 100 again since I didn't do it last year. But my goal is my main thing. It really just depends on what happens with writing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Hannah, mm -hmm. did you end up hitting 100? I did. Yeah. Oh, for the first how many, time. How many children's books did you read at the end? What? <laughs> how many picture books did you read at the end? I, I know you read, read one. one picture book. Oh, okay. Perfect. I read one picture book. Um, and that's just because I got sent an advanced copy of it and it looked really cool. So I had to read it. Um, but the <laughs> the books I ended up reading to like make it there, I read three of the Cassandra Clare novellas. Um, so, nice. yeah. That counts. I was like, I kind of <laughs> yeah. feel like I'm cheating, but at the same yeah. time, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's your really own challenge. challenge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's my own challenge, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, people are saying I like having a challenge and a goal. I'm a genius starting a thing, but also Amazing. it's not original. And I like feeling good about myself. <laughs> Perfect. Um, a lot of people are setting theirs for 100, and a lot of people are also doing 52. So mm -hmm. I feel like those are two of the like. Mm -hmm. bigger ones that people yeah. have to do yeah i've noticed that as the years go on the goodreads like goal average that they give across all users has lowered yeah it used to be 50 something now it's 40 something i noticed that it's too. very interesting i think it's because um like the past few years people have started setting their goal at like one book or yeah. two books oh, or something yes, yes. because they didn't want like the pressure of it I remember yeah. talking about that a couple years ago. I did so the I think same that's thing. Probably why. Yeah. yeah, it used to be at like 50 something and then it went down to like 45. Um, yeah. And now I think it's around 45 every year or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the idea right. of doing one book, but I also like that it says how far you are behind your goal. Yeah, me So too. it keeps me on pace, but I also do like it, ha like just yeah. having it as a counter. Exactly. I only did it last year just because I knew I wanted to focus on writing and mm -hmm. like I know myself if I had a goal that was higher and I saw that I was behind I would be like no like I need to pick up my reading so I just was like I think I said it for oh I don't even know 12 yeah I did one a month <laughs> oh, so yeah. I said it for 12 um but like I obviously quickly accomplished that but I feel like if you like, like, they're very, they've become so controversial in the past couple of years, Goodreads, like, reading challenges. I feel like so many people are like, I don't want to do it and, like, kind of hate it. And for me, I just like giving myself that goal and feeling accomplished about it. But I also don't think there's anything wrong with not doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um Sorry, I read a question and then I lost it. So sorry <laughs> about that. Uh. Um, there's a question on Twitter that I really like. Um, are there any, this is from Wolfgar111. I don't know what your name is. Um, but they said, um, are there any authors trying something new genre subject series in 2019 that you're excited to read? So it's like, is there any author that's like writing outside of their regular genre? Hmm. I'm trying to think of someone. Yeah, I don't think I have anyone. I'm obviously the most excited for King of Scars. I could literally die. Yeah, I have no so idea what it's about, but I'm going to go oh, to the signing anyway. I'm so excited. <laughs> but I, I don't really pay attention to new releases. I just oh, I do. end up coming to them when I come to them. But I read a lot of backlisted books. Yeah. I feel like I read a decent mix, but there's always like yeah. a certain number every year that I'm just like so hyped for. Um, I made my video and I feel like, uh, well, there's a debut author that I'm really excited to read. 
Um, Savannah Brown, who's a YouTuber, uh, she's coming out with a book this year. So I'm excited to read hers. But I don't know about anyone who's doing something out of their genre. Oh, they said Lee Bardugo is writing a contemporary? Right. Wait, does what? that come out in 2019? Oh, is that Ninth mm -hmm. House? Yeah, Ninth House. Yes! Okay, so and I think she writes that I one. Wait. Yeah, exactly, oh. that one. Because that one's about, like, a, a girl who goes to Yale, and then she, like... I think it's, it, like, a cri crime novel? I don't think that's yeah. the right word. She, she, um, she basically, like... I don't know if she's, like, in the school or if she's, like... Um, investigating this um, secret society at Yale. Oh. Yeah, it sounds wait, amazing. Wait, amazing. that was like my type of book. Because mm -hmm. okay, she college aged? I think so. This yeah. is what we were asking I think for it's earlier. Adult. Yeah, she's older. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's adult. Ah. Yeah. So I'm excited. Though. New adult or like adult adult? Probably new adult. I think she's probably yeah. like. I think 20. adult, but she's like, yeah, 19 or 20. Yeah. yeah. This is what I wanted. It sounds this really good. I'm so I'm excited. I'm really excited. For it. Yeah. Oh, but I love like ugh, I love secret societies. Mm -hmm. They scare me, but I oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about them that much, so I can't. Really... Well, when I, heard, when <laughs> I, I heard think about them a lot. <laughs> when I heard the synopsis about that, have you guys seen Gossip Girl? Yes. Okay, you know which episode I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about too. Yes. <laughs> Uh, also, I was just watching Veronica Mars, and there was a whole secret society thing. So interesting. Have you read I... Book of Spirits and Thieves? Because that has a secret society in it. It's by Morgan Rhodes, the author of Falling Kingdoms. Oh, okay. I no, I haven't read it. Reads. It was it? good. Hold on, it's taking a while to load. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Goodreads is. What is it called? Uh, a Book of Spirits and Thieves. Is it part of the Falling Kingdom series? It has, like, something to do with that universe, if I remember oh. correctly. But I enjoyed it. It's a, it says it's a spin-off series. Hmm. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. It's but set in like Toronto. I know. Yeah. You just said it in the American way. Toronto. We say Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> wow, rude. <laughs> Okay, more questions. Oh, a good book with college age characters is We If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. I just requested that from the library, actually. I have that. Jane and Smith. I, yeah, I have that and I really want to read it, especially after I read um The Secret History. Buddy read. Yes, it's we should coming in the mail it. from the library, so Okay, we should buddy read it because I do have oh, that. Oh, I used to have that one, but then mm -hmm. I think I got rid of it. I know it's about like Shakespeare, <laughs> and that's why I yeah, wanted to read it. Yeah, yeah. So. That was why I wanted to read it too, but uh, I think I got rid of it. Or it's sitting in a, actually, it might be in my garage. Do we have any other bookish resolutions? Like about um, our channels or anything like that? A consistent upload schedule. <laughs> <laughs> you would more like buddy. wishful thinking. <laughs> I'm hoping to just continue doing like what I've been doing, but I also don't know what I'm gonna do as far as like reading blogs go anymore. Mm -hmm. That's something I still need to figure out. I think I'm gonna take at least a month off of them and then see. Mm -hmm. Um. Please stop asking about twenty-four hour readathons. They will happen when they happen. I know a lot of you are really excited, but let's just take a deep breath. They'll happen when they happen. You can do them by yourselves. I hope you know that, but not any time in this month. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So Haley's perfect. So she's not going to change anything. Stop. Uh, <laughs> Hardly. Oh. I do want to try and do more videos. Like, I noticed that a lot of the videos that I've been doing, and especially because I didn't read a ton last year, like, I shouldn't say that. I didn't read as much as I usually do. I want to try and do more videos about, like, recommendations and books that I've read mm -hmm. because a lot of things that I've been doing are books that I want to read. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to be doing, like, more follow-up. I'm also trying to decide what I'm going to do with wrap-ups. I actually just put out a poll today if I wanted to do monthly wrap-ups and have them be longer or do um, every five books or so do a wrap-up. Which one will be more in-depth, do you think? I think the five books because I won't, like, obviously I can make the 
end of the month one as long as I want to. But at the same time, it's such a pain to edit. And I just know myself. Uh, I'll be like, this video has been too long. So I'm going to like pick it up. So mm -hmm. I feel like five book, like every five books or so would be easier. But I don't know. I'm not fully committed. I hate yet. doing monthly wrap ups. And honestly, I love like, them. Mm -mm, I hate them. <laughs> I don't like doing them at all. I don't even really like watching them anymore. They're my favorite videos to watch. <laughs> I just don't because I feel like I don't I mean it's not the watching it that's the the part that bothers me it's like the it's doing them because like sometimes I just like don't have that many feelings on a book like I'll read a book and I'm like this is meh and I don't really feel like explaining why I thought it was meh yeah. I just did yeah. um and this was pretty good but like it wasn't exceptional so I don't have that much to say about it um and I don't know so I haven't been doing like I mean granted I barely upload but like I haven't been <laughs> more doing <than> <laughs> I haven't been doing wrap ups for like a really, really long time now. Mm -hmm. And what I've found that I really like doing is just doing my like um, five books you need to read or seven mm -hmm. books you need to read videos that I've done. Basically like random reading recommendations after I've read like a decent chunk of books and I've found like five to seven or something that I really like and I just want to recommend to people. Um, so I like doing that because then I get to talk about like the books I care about and the books that I feel like yeah. I want to talk about. So I think I'm going to keep doing more of that instead of sticking to like the formula of like a wrap up and a like a TBR, which I don't do anyway, mm -hmm. but um, Same. yeah, I like doing those. I like your, I like doing currently reading. Videos yeah. I like well. doing currently reading too. And also because I can't do TBRs, I mm -hmm. set TBRs and then I'm, I try to be rebellious against myself. I'm like, I won't read that. <laughs> but I actually love doing wrap ups. I've gotten very obviously inconsistent with them when I was taking my break, but actually this year, my whole like I have this new notebook where each book I'm reading, I'm writing a whole bunch of notes on so that I can I'm make doing that in my phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been trying to do that more because mm. I forget right after I close the book. Same. I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't know what happened. I don't know who these characters are. No. But my whole goal this year is to be um, more critical I think or just think more in depth about each book I read and I'm planning on actually finishing every single book I pick up because I am terrible about DNFing books there's um, but that's also wrong with that. there's nothing wrong with it but I also sometimes the ending will surprise you and that will mm -hmm. actually be what wins you over and I'll never know because I just stopped reading it after 50 pages. But I love doing wrap ups and I'm trying to be more critical, trying to use all of my stars in the star rating instead of just fours and fives because I'll actually finish all the books. So there will be some one star books. Yay, I'm going to hate books this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, my plan is the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm planning on DNFing books just because I find that reading something that I'm not enjoying makes me hate reading. Like it makes mm. me not want to do it. So I think I want to try and really start enjoying reading again and finding things that I like and sticking to those books. And if something isn't capturing my attention, then putting it down. And there absolutely have been books that have surprised me and the ending has made me enjoy them. But I just feel like if the journey isn't enjoyable and I'm trudging through the end product isn't going to be worth it. Like to me, that mm -hmm. doesn't make a well-written book. So I'm going to try and DNF some books and not worry about it so much because I feel like most of the things that I read last year were three out of five stars. Nothing has really, mm -hmm. well, that's not true because Skyward, I finished that and that I really, really enjoyed. But I feel like a lot of things that I read last year didn't blow me away. And I was just waiting for something to blow me away. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand that too. Um, I'm I never DNF anything, so um, there are definitely books that I kind of just force myself through. But I feel like one of my goals for this year, in terms of my reading and my channel, I guess, is to not like force myself to read just for the sake of reading. I do that a lot. Like I will just read books even if I'm like not really that interested in them, just because I want to be reading something. Um, and I want to just like I'm I'm pretty good at picking up books that I know that I will like. I've gotten like good at knowing my taste. Um, so that's not really the problem. It's just like, I, I will even pick up books that I don't think I'll like love. I'll, and I'll read them just for the sake of reading. And I don't want to do that as much. Um, I think that's how I got to 100 books this past year, because I would just read all the time. Um, and this year, I just want to like, just read the books that I really, really feel mm -hmm. like reading. And there are way more than 52 of them. So it's easily manageable. <laughs> um, 
but yeah it's just pushing myself to do that Mm -hmm. well I also as we all know I put off books that I'm really excited about like I still haven't read the night circus um queen of air and darkness (laughs) yes (laughs) Uh, because I'll yeah I just want something that when I really need something to cheer me up I will be able to reach for that book but then I don't know I like denying myself happiness (laughs) I do the same thing yeah (laughs) I get that I do the same thing with books too that's why I'll read like things I don't care about instead Mm -hmm. of picking up what I feel like reading yeah I get you so that's my plan this year is just to read books that I'm excited about which doesn't seem like it should be a goal it should just be common sense but here we are well I feel like because there's so many books out there it's Mm -hmm. hard to decide which ones you care about I don't know at least for me there's so many and I think because my reading tastes are so vast and there's a lot of things that I'm interested in and things sound cool and then there's things that a lot of other people have enjoyed so I feel like I have to read that like my TBR pile just becomes so oversaturated with things that I can't even make sense of what really is interesting to me and what's not. There's just so many sources that I'm getting recommendations from and everything that it just, it's a struggle. <laughs> I like how we all have different problems. Yeah. Yeah. And this is <laughs> nice to know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm also really planning on going to the library this year which i've talked about before but i'm trying as hard as i can not to buy books this year and i'm also trying to get myself off of publishers mailing lists and only request arcs for books that i'm actually really excited about like hannah we have to get we really daisy do. jones we have to yeah um, <laughs> but i and because like i've talked about before i when i get stressed out i buy books and that's not great um but I don't know I figured out that my library is actually like amazing so that I've been really happy about that but also I think I'm over utilizing my library now because every day I go on my library app and I'm just like let's request all the books I have like 17 holds right now so (laughs) (laughs) so I mean it's kind of still like um impulse buying but without spending money it's an improvement, baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, there's this question um, on Twitter from Books by San, I think that's how you say their name. Um, but they said, do you have any genres that you don't normally read that you'd like to read more of in 2019? Ooh, I want to read more sci-fi and fantasy. Mm-hmm. Definitely sci-fi because I never pick up sci-fi, but an absolutely remarkable thing is technically sci-fi. Kind of. Ish. Kind of. Yeah, it yeah. leans more towards sci-fi than anything else I read. And I feel like, the thing is, I'm just terrified of space. So I'm like, I cannot read any sci-fi. But it's more than just space that is sci-fi. And I don't know. I, I just want to read from as many genres as I can in age ranges. Mm-hmm. What about you? I want to read more nonfiction because mm. I feel like I read like zero nonfiction. I, I read some more this past year, but like, There are definitely some nonfiction books that I want to pick up. Um, I started getting into like mysteries and thrillers last year. Like I read some more. So that was nice. I want to continue with that. Um, I would say I want to try reading more sci-fi, but honestly, I don't think I want to. I just don't think it's for me. Like every time I try and read a sci-fi book, I'm just like, I don't care enough. (laughs) Um, I know there are some that I want to read. Mm -hmm. There are definitely some that are on my TBR that I'll probably try out this year. Um, But yeah, I mean... I love my fantasy and like that's just my thing so um but definitely more nonfiction and more um mysteries for sure i want to try and read more contemporary which is something i do read a lot of but i feel like ya recently has become very fantasy centric so i don't know if that's just me or what i'm seeing but my 2019 releases video like talking about my most anticipated ones was mostly fantasy because that's the most that I could find I couldn't find a lot of contemporaries that were coming out that were really exciting me so I feel like I've read a lot of um fantasy recently and I would like to try and read some more contemporary because that is a genre that I do really enjoy I just don't want to deny myself reading any genre because before I would hear of a book and then someone would say it was sci-fi and then I would automatically think, oh, sci-fi isn't for me because I've had bad luck with sci-fi in the past. But I just want to, if something 
sounds interesting. I want to read it no matter what the technical genre is. So just everything. Also, yes, we're nonfiction. I just got Michelle Obama's book. Oh, I got that I'm too. I'm so excited. Uh, also, New Adult. I want to try that. Like I'm gonna New try. Adult, like romance or like the New Adult that's kind of becoming its own thing that's separate from the romance part of New Adult? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try some smut this year. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I would say that I would want to read more smut, but like I read so much fan fiction that like <laughs> there's no point. You already got that checked off your list. Yes, got it. <laughs> oh, Amy Butcher asks, "Do you plan to reread any book th any books this year?" Yeah, I want to reread sure. the Harry Potter series because I have only the first few books I read physically, but then the last ones I've only ever listened to the audiobooks for. So I want to, like, actually physically read them. I'm going to have to get another set, though, because I have, like, the American box set thing that has Hogwarts on the side, and I don't want to crack the spine for them. Also, I want one that says the Philosopher's Stone, not the Sorcerer's Stone, which is false. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I actually went on my way to get the illustrated Philosopher's Stone. No, no, yes, Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. Because... Yeah, I think to feel I superior, have, I guess. yeah, <laughs> amazing. I have the first three illustrated ones, so I think I'm gonna reread them in the illustrated ones, and then the other ones they don't have mm -hmm. illustrated yet. Are they doing yeah. them? Um, it just they are taking two years for I think the longer oh, books. Yeah. I think the fourth book is supposed to come out this October. Are they? Do I thought they were gonna do it in like part one and part two because that book is going to be big enough to kill. Think someone. about the fifth book. Yeah, I can't yeah, be able to kill someone. <laughs> It's going to take up a whole bookshelf. Maybe oh. they'll release both parts at the same time. I really don't know. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like they won't do two parts because people will be mad I, because it's... You'll have to pay double. Yeah, yeah, I also feel like they won't... I, I just think they won't include as many illustrations. Yeah. Which is then, like point? as much as they did in the first... Like, what? But what's the point? I mean, <laughs> it's I just, so I, long. Can it just be a picture book? Yeah. I'm fine with that. Let's do that. <laughs> um, I definitely want to reread a lot of books this year. I think that's actually one of my goals that I would set for myself for sure. Um, I want to reread a lot more this year than I have like past years. There are like, like I started rereading The Infernal Devices. I just want to reread like my favorite books. And that's what I really want to do. Because like sometimes like I'll read all these new books and I'm like oh these are so good and then I think about some of my favorite books I'm like wow like I remember loving that so much but it's been like three years and I don't remember every detail of it or some of the specific reasons of why I loved it so much and now I just kind of want to go back like I want to do that with um Six of Crows and Crooked, Crooked Kingdom we could read them uh, at the same time yes we can um and I want to do that with um the Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender, because I read that like four years ago at this point, I think. Um, we can read and... that at the same time. It's on my bookshelf. <laughs> I haven't read it. I haven't oh read God. it. I, haven't I deny so myself much. books. We <laughs> but... then pass this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I want to do it with a bunch of books. So mm -hmm. I definitely want to do that. I want to reread many books as well, but also not as many of, as I have in the past, because sometimes I will reread a book. But then it's like the 27th time that I've read the first Harry Potter book. So I feel ashamed of that. So I'm not putting it on my Goodreads um, so that people won't know me. Um, but this time I plan on being more conscientious of the books that I reread. But I do want to, I, I want to read, I think, a classic a month. And I want to reread all of Jane Austen's stuff because I am trash. Uh, I just, oh, um, with Cinnamon Please asks, is there a series you want to start this year? So many that I need to start because I've been waiting. Um, I have some of them right here. I need to read all of the Grisha trilogy because I'm going to see Lee Bardugo. And also I need to read all of the Six of Crows duology because I'm going to see Lee Bardugo. And I probably shouldn't read at least one book by her before going to see her. Otherwise... I don't think I'll go. I'll just be ashamed of myself. Oh my gosh, I can't get them back on my bookshelf. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, need to, I want to read The Lord of the Rings. I don't oh. know if that'll happen. <laughs> um, I also have Scythe and I have- Oh, I want to read that. 
I have a darker shade of magic, an ember in the ashes, a lumine. I'm just looking at my bookshelf and all of the first you books in a series. Read ember? Why didn't I know that? I don't know. They sent me the books twice. <laughs> and I yeah, have read twice too. <laughs> I have Truth Witch as well. Um it's just it's embarrassing. They you really do books. have so many. You like, really do. I'm still, I, I, any book I that anyone talks about, <laughs> it's literally like you put them in like a safe and you're like, well, can't read that now. <laughs> like, that's beautiful. Yeah. Strange the Dreamer. Haven't read that. The Wrath and the Dawn. Uh, literally any book that has any hype ever. <laughs> She's like, you're not wrong. You're, you're listing off like half of my favorite book series. <laughs> I didn't add myself things. <laughs> Get oh past it, Haley. <laughs> I can't. I never will. But then oh. also Warcross. You know, there's yeah. Children <laughs> of Blood and Bone, Vicious, <laughs> other books. Oh <laughs> what do you read? Yeah, contemporary what? books where there's only one because I have commitment issues. Oh my god. And I didn't mention all the ones that I've read the first book, but not the rest of them. Oh. The Diviners. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to have a great reading here, everybody. I have so many books to read. So <laughs> you do. And- I mean, I am excited for you because you have so many good books to read. Yeah, it's true. And I know you're gonna like a lot of them. So But that's why I uh, I don't know. <laughs> did you want to get into this now <laughs> let's just keep on going we have enough time that's, all, that's why i read so many backlisted books because they're just books that everybody loved but i'm i was <laughs> waiting 12 years in azkaban until i could finally maybe, let myself... <laughs> maybe if you wait long enough it will be like you've discovered a hidden gem that no one has ever heard about before have you, you heard, heard of like, six of stories <laughs> you'll be like how is no one talking about this i found this great hidden series called the lord of the rings i think it would be great <laughs> so underrated nobody on booktube talks about it nobody in the world yeah oh. you know i think orlando bloom would be great in this perfect <laughs> wow oh god um i genuinely can't think of a series i want to start <laughs> I feel like I've read so many series. Yeah, I don't have any either. Oh, I want to read, um, well, you said Scythe. I want to read that. Mm-hmm. But I want to read And I Darken. Because a lot Kurt, of people. I need Kirsten to read that White? one too. That- yeah, but yeah, Kirsten Kirsten White. White. A lot of people read it like last year and the year before, I think is when it came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I've just seen a bunch of people talking about it. And I've had some people tell me that they think I would like it. Um, so I want to try it. I don't know if I'll like it, but we'll see. We can read it together. Yeah, you haven't read it? No. Nope. Let's buddy read it. Perfect. I've had it for a while. Um, I don't really have any series that I want to start because I'm pretty good at starting the series that I'm interested in, but I have a ton. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> I, I love you. <laughs> I do have a ton of sequels that I haven't read. Mm-hmm. I was terrible at reading sequels last year just because... I'm not the kind of person who generally will gravitate toward a series. I like to enjoy a story, enjoy a world, and then move on to a new world. But this year, I really want to get to all the sequels that I put off forever. I'm pretty good. I, I'm pretty good about like reading <sighs> sequels. The only one I haven't read from last year, I want to say, is Wind Witch, the second Truth Witch book. And I want to read that before um, Blood Witch comes out. We can read it together. <laughs> yes, we should. Snow Reads says, take a shot every time the bookmarked gals say, let's buddy read it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's going to be the year. And how many times will we actually do it? Let's be honest. No, you always start before I do. I don't Anna. always start before you do. Clockwork yeah. Angel? I literally read 30 pages because I was lonely. <laughs> oh. I needed Will to comfort me, okay? I think Jem would be better at that, but okay. Okay, but it starts with Will, so. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Oh, goodness. But I definitely want to read a classic a month. I think that's going to be a goal. I need to read read North and South. You should read Rebecca. Yes, I. That's on my list. I was gonna get that it. one actually. But You'll you love that buddy read it. So good. Everybody read it. <laughs> Take a shot. 
Oh, God. <sighs> Silence. <laughs> People keep saying that you're a Slytherin, Haley. We yes, don't know. We know. <laughs> we don't know. I think we do know. I they know. We know. know. You don't know. You're Confronted. just in denial. <laughs> Okay, do we have any Twitter questions? Um, sorry, my Twitter's just taking 12 years to load. We have so many people here right now. Did you see how many people we have? This is our most viewed one yet. Really? That's exciting. Yeah. You stuck with us? Wow. Is it, like, is it the day that's better? The day and the time? I Maybe. Maybe. Is Friday better for us. all of you? Yeah. Let or is this know. time better for everyone? Mm-hmm. I can't but do Friday also, at 8. Because I have RuPaul's Drag Race, but I can do any other time on Friday. <laughs> uh, I, have I just found it very interesting. I think everyone's going to leave now. Yeah. Because you don't I'm care gonna... about them. Okay. <laughs> um, Rosh Reads asks Do you think there's pressure to read an unrealistic amount of books on booktubers slash bloggers? I think it can seem like that. Hmm. But I think that's like it's personal pressure. Because mm -hmm. it seems mm -hmm. like that. Like, no one's telling you you need to read, like, 50, 100, whatever books. But because you see all these other people reading so many books, you, like, at least me, I put the pressure on myself to read so many books. And it kind of encourages a little bit of competitive reading, which isn't necessarily always a bad thing. Like, it can encourage you to challenge yourself and read a little bit more. But for me sometimes I'm like oh my god this person read like 50 books in a month like what am I doing I'm a failure and that's when it gets kind of a little bit difficult but I think there's just the encouragement of reading in general like whenever someone comments on my um they'll comment on a video or whatever and say especially on my 2018 wrap-up a lot of people are like I only read like 12 books I only read blah 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 but that's something still to be proud of because it's better than reading zero books. So I think in that way, there is a little bit of competition that can make it seem like you have to set this outrageous Goodreads goal. I think that the pressure from other people usually comes when people haul a lot of books and then don't read a lot of the books that are hauled. I think that's the only time that there's someone else putting pressure on booktubers or bloggers or bookstagrammers. Um, but I think that nobody's going to be, no one, no one shamed me for only reading 40 books last year, last year. Yeah, this is a new year. We're going to read better. Um, but it's definitely personal pressure, at least personally, um, and for Haley too, but I'm not sure. Yeah. No one's like everybody, all the booktubers need to read a hundred books a year. Mm -hmm. I think that like, sometimes there is that expectation <laughs> because some of us just do read a lot um that we are all going to read that many books um but I don't know like I don't really feel that pressure ever I don't know why precisely um I just like I said like this past year the reason I think I read 100 books is just because I just kept pressuring myself to read books because I just felt like reading even if I didn't like the book um so I don't really feel like it was like a specific pressure from anybody else again like it's just an internal pressure um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really feel that that much pressure either coming from myself either. It's just such like a it's just such a passion for me that it, it I don't know. It doesn't matter to me that much. Yes, it's not an overwhelming pressure. I don't really get yeah. stressed out. Maybe yeah. at the end of the year when I'm comparing to everybody else, that's the only time that I felt pressure. I felt way more pressure for reading in school, obviously, because that was a mm -hmm. reading. But I'm not comparing my amount of reading every month to other people. Mm -hmm. But I know some people, there, there definitely, I feel there can be a sense of competitive reading on mm -hmm. BookTube. But I don't personally feel it. Yeah, I, I see that too. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, like, I more so put a lot of pressure on myself because I know there's so many books that I do want to read. So it's like, well, if I'm not reading something constantly, then I can't possibly get to all the books that I want to read. And what if one of them is like a hidden gem? So that's where it's a struggle. But I'm going to try and work on that a little bit this year. I feel like it it might have been worse before, before we had um, the discussion around reading slumps. 
Mm -hmm. I think now it's way more acceptable to say I've just been in a reading slump. As long as it doesn't last years, I feel like you're okay. Um, I feel like we should probably just take like one more question, one or two quick questions. (sighs) Time lady. (laughs) Sorry. Also, the sun went behind like a cloud and now it's really dark in my room. So I'm going to go turn the light off. All of a sudden you were in night time. (laughs) Yeah. So if you have any more questions, everybody, leave them down below. Please. I beg you. <laughs> also, a lot of people said that Fridays at this time is good. So maybe we might be switching from Tuesdays to Fridays. Maybe. No promises. Yeah, we'll have to. But maybe. Talk wink, about wink, it. wink. <laughs> that was the most awkward wink I've ever done. Uh, <sighs> Um, oh, I love this one from with cinnamon, please. Again, any five star predictions for this year? Oh, I just read a question that was yeah. like that, but Aaron Morgenstern's right. book, Aaron Morgenstern's book, and Chain of Gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I haven't read Aaron Morgenstern, but I said, Yeah, for you, not and for me. <laughs> Daisy Jones and the Six. I have no <laughs> doubt that I'm gonna love that, but now I can't get my hype too high i'm scared now <laughs> uh, but it, it sounds very similar to uh evelyn hugo mm-hmm. the historical aspect of it yeah the fame aspect of it so i have so many five star predictions because i haven't read anything so like everything on my shelf i'm very excited about um oh i just got bear town from Friedrich mm. Bachman from the library. It just came in today. And I'm really excited about that because I've heard so many good things. Um, also, another goal this year is to read more translated works. So that is a translated work. Um, read Shadow of the Wind. I don't Sorry. Know. Yes, it's on my, I was just about to say that. It's on my, on my bookshelf right over there. Um, I have uh, a darker shade. I have like all of Victoria Schwab stuff. I've read one book by her. I didn't really like it, but it was her first book ever. So I'm more optimistic. Um, and then I have just so many books. The Night Circus. I have, um, what is the one? Where'd it go? Oh, The Astonishing Color of After. That's mm. another one. So, so good. Many. What about you, Haley? Um, I'm going to go off of the new releases that are coming out. So Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I believe that's a debut, but the synopsis kind of gave me Six of Crows-ish vibes. So mm. I'm automatically like, Yes, please. Is that um, the Joan oh, of Arc one? Oh, I have no clue. I don't know that. One. I feel like there's a Joan of Arc retelling, and I think Maybe. it's that one. I'm gonna look it I up. hope it is, because then that's a bonus point. I guess it kind of seems like it could be. Um, but there's also Aurora Rising, which is by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. Um, I never say their names in that order because they're not like that on the cover. So that felt very unnatural and uncomfortable. Um, but they're coming out with a new sci-fi series, and I really enjoyed their last book. Um, the sequel to Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I don't I guess I only gave the first book 4.5 out of five stars, which isn't like only, but I don't know if it would be a five out of five star. Um, there's also Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, which is Project Runway meets Mulan. Look up the office. It sounds so cool. Like, it just sounds amazing. I'm very excited for that one. Um, what else is there? Oh, I had one more. Obviously, King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I feel like that's going to be a five out of five stars. And if it's not, I'll quit booktube. I won't actually. (laughs) I'll be (laughs) too. Wow. Keep your promises, Haley. <laughs> uh, and then also the last one is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Which I'm very excited for. And I think those are the ones that I'm thinking would have. I don't think that book there. is the Joan of Arc one. There's a book no. that, co- that comes out this year that that's like a fantasy, like reimagining of Joan of Arc. Mm. I don't remember which one it is. I don't remember what it's called, um, but I know it, it exists and it's coming out this it's year. Kind of familiar. When you figure it out, let me know because yeah. that sounds really Same. interesting. Okay. You can buddy read it? Take a shot. <laughs> um okay. Um oh one that has been asked a lot from Zoe B. Tips on tackling a huge TBR pile. Um, I also need this because I have a huge TBR pile. So I think that 
start with what you're most excited about or yeah because that will inspire you to read more and also don't be like me read the things you want to read Mm -hmm. first (laughs) yeah I second that reading the things you're most excited for first is always so helpful yeah it it sounds self-explanatory simple I mean (laughs) I wouldn't follow this advice so (laughs) there we go um audiobooks are a great thing Mackenzie and Bryn Rapp just said that in the Mm -hmm. comment section but I also think that you shouldn't feel like you have to read every single book that you have on your TBR pile I think that you should let yourself DNF things let yourself donate books that you don't like or let yourself like go through your books and do an unhaul there's nothing wrong with that it's just like clothes you have them sitting there for a while and you don't wear them just do the same thing with your books and give them a new home where someone actually will read them because I was in a place where I was so overwhelmed and intimidated by my TBR that like I just had to do an overhaul of it and now I feel a lot better but I am getting to a point where I feel like I need to do that again (laughs) but just don't feel like you have to read every single thing that you have Mm -hmm. no I'm I'm doing the exact same thing I'm getting rid of a lot of books I am unhauling them um so I think that's great advice as well um don't feel like you need to read everything um and I think also going to your library more and just getting the books so like if you have a physical TBR that you own um that's different but I think that if you can for a little bit stop buying books because that's what I'm doing and then just get them from the library because then you can just return them if you don't want to read it and then it's not weighing you down oh i like this daniela in prague says unhauling books makes the exciting books shine yes that's a really good way it's true it. mm-hmm. it's true because you realize which books you actually want to read and then you're more excited about having them they're yeah. not covered up by all the ones you're mad about Ooh, um someone asks uh how to read more in the new year i think this can be one of our last questions I'm planning on I'm planning on starting and ending my day with reading, which I think is going to be really helpful. Like even if I read like 10 or 15 pages, at least I'm getting into the habit of like opening a book first thing in the morning rather than scrolling through my phone and then last thing at night like it's the same thing. I would usually scroll through my phone or do whatever. So, doing something productive and actually getting into reading i think that will be really helpful like just setting times for it i think that is a great way to read more and get more pages in is setting times for it and setting yourself mini goals every day or every week i agree i think scheduling it into your day is really really helpful um and it doesn't have to be like a big thing it's just however amount of time whatever amount of time you have in your day um but something that really really helps me is setting timers like i will set a timer on my phone for like for me 30 minutes um and i'll set a timer for 30 minutes and i'll sit and i'll read straight for those 30 minutes and then if i feel like i want to keep reading i just keep reading if i don't feel like i want to keep reading i stop but that way at least every single day i read for like 30 minutes and it's a dedicated time it doesn't have to be the same time of day it depends on the day but at least for 30 minutes with a timer set i'm not distracted i only read and it's really really helpful to keep you reading i actually got a reading timer in my stocking. That's so cute. <laughs> That's book. wait, what? Yeah. yeah, it's a little book. I haven't actually used it yet, but you can set it as like a countdown. So you can set it for how much you want to read, or you can set I I don't know how to explain this right now, but you can set it for how long you usually would read, or you can set it for like a goal to read. I don't yeah, struggles, but it just has minutes and seconds on it. That's so I haven't cute. used it yet, oh but I think it's gonna be fun. Oh, it beeps. <laughs> yeah, something that I like to do is making it kind of like a challenge. So like, like I like that, the 30 minutes. Um, but what I usually do is, um, or what I've been trying to do is that I started bullet journaling. Well, I was bullet journaling before, but I have a new one for the new year. But I've been um, like color coding each book that I read and then tracking down how many pages I read a day um, just so that I can compare it to the other days. And it's not really a challenge, but it's keeping me aware of how much I read a day because like you said earlier Hannah sometimes I will read like one book a month and then sometimes I'll read like five books in a week so this is just keeping me consistent 
And I, I'll try to read in the morning. I don't think my mind will be awake enough to read in the morning, but I like that idea, starting and ending your day, because I am definitely somebody to wake up and immediately go on my phone. I'll like go and get my coffee first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you immediately wake up. You're or like, oh, maybe like, let's oh read. my god, it's like when my face recognition doesn't recognize my face in the morning because I'm like, hello, <laughs> <laughs> how do you know I'm there? <laughs> Who is this stranger? <laughs> it's a struggle. <laughs> oh gosh, wow, a lot of people have really good ideas. Oh, people are talking about the app Forest. I've heard of Forest. I don't really I know what it does. It. Does it block all of your apps on your phone? That would be that very helpful does? for writing because struggles. I use Tomato Timer on my computer. That's what I do. I set it for yeah, but then it makes really annoying noises. Then they scare me when they go mm-hmm. off because I'll be sitting there writing and it's like bah, bah, and I'm like oh god, <laughs> like who died? It's a struggle. But I'm gonna look up this app. Ooh. Stay focused. Oh yeah, so it's like the same yeah. It's the same idea. Uh, I didn't know that there was a phone one. Shell cool. download. <laughs> oh, um, also, sorry. What? Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, okay. Um, people are talking about bullet journaling. Um, let me know how you track your reading in your bullet journal if you use a bullet journal because I, I'm just loving tracking things because I'm all about the stats. But I'm also – I did that thing where you draw like 100 books and I'm filling them in with like – the spine colors of every book that I read just I don't know it's pretty I like it that's really pretty but I'm also tracking all the books that I get in a month and whether they're I bought them or they were sent to me or I got them from the library and like my star ratings and stuff I'm just a nerd for stats and tracking so let me know if you do it sorry you can keep going <laughs> sorry <laughs> nothing I was just gonna say that we should probably end it here and talk about next week <sighs> You're hurting me. I'm you always make dinner. me seem like I'm the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> Not the bad Blame one. Blame Hannah that we're ending. They're always like, Hannah, make sure we stay on time because we talk so much. And I was like, okay. I asked you once and you you got too much power from it. <laughs> we need a timekeeper, Zoe. I just want to keep on going, but okay. Uh, Blame these evil people. Excellent. <laughs> Who's the real Slytherin here? <laughs> Hannah, the evil person. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's always you, Haley. No. There's nothing wrong with being a Slytherin. No, there's not. I just don't know that. Except I'm... if you're Haley. So, our book two New Year week... still dragging me. Dragging you harder. I'm more motivated this year to drag you in a better manner. As our long book as of the week <laughs> is. <laughs> Uh, Janine, I think that's how you pronounce her name, from This Story Ain't Over. We will leave her link in the description after this live show is over. We'll also tweet it out at our Twitter. But she recently did a 2019 goals video, and she's also doing a bunch of a bunch of fun booktube stuff. I'm really enjoying her personality and how excited she is about books. And I think she's super cute. So if you want to check her out, we will tweet out where to find her but her channel is this story ain't over in case you want to look now and you're not gonna wait for us <laughs> oh my I god talk. i think you guys should just okay i'm gonna leave now excellent <laughs> okay so uh next week we are going to be on Haley's channel and what are we going to be talking about Haley? Uh, We are going to be talking about book-to-movie adaptations. Also, sorry, someone asked me to do a Hogwarts quiz reaction Mm -hmm. video, and I did one, and it's one of my favorite videos that I've ever done, but it didn't do that well, so please go and watch it, because I worked so hard on editing that. Anyways, um, yeah, we're going to be talking about book-to-movie adaptations, upcoming ones, past ones, our favorites, all of that stuff. My reading (laughs) timer stopped. (laughs) I don't know how to make it actually stop. Oh, it's going to keep going. Anyways, yeah, so that'll be fun. And that was it. <laughs> so I guess we will see you guys next week. Um, we're going to be doing it on Tuesday again, Tuesday at 7 p.m. on my channel. And we will discuss the idea of bringing it to Fridays. I don't know. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this chapter. Uh, and we will see you next week. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thanks for coming and listening.